But there's, there's only one thing that's going to calm us for the next four weeks, and that's the Masters is in three weeks. Oh. Welcome back to episode 45 of the Loggerhead Golf Podcast. Golf season's upon us. The pollen is fallen, so <laughs> it has been brutal on the golf course. But we're How long have you had that stored away? <laughs> long enough. Jeez. We missed last week, so you got to bring some cheesiness to it this week. Pollen hasn't gotten me this year, so no. I've been I've been pretty, but I also haven't been outside much. As Ted Nugent said, I'm on the stranglehold right now, which is pollen, so it's <laughs> not good. So, uh, obviously, we had a fantastic Players' Championship, so even though it was the quote-unquote weakest field they've had since tournament, uh, Sunday was actually fun golf to watch. And the back nine we actually got to watch, almost commercial-free. The front nine, however, was... Pretty brutal. Who broadcasted it again? NBC. It was NBC. Yeah. yeah, it was NBC. But they did like the back nine. Almost it was almost commercial free. They did a, quite a few playing through, but physical commercials were limited. I mean, they've got the money to not need they just commercials, proved it. so they I just mean, proved they it. could just do all that. But I thought I thought it was, you know, seeing the variety of shots, you know, and seeing different players from uh, you know every angle. I thought was uh, was excellent. I mean, it's a crazy concept, us wanting to watch golf. and Actual watching golf, golf, not shots. just putts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I watched all pretty much majority of Saturday's round, um, and then I watched all Sunday. And, you know, you get through, and, then, like, that's the first thing. I know a lot of people are tweeting about, like, this co- this coverage is awesome, right? But if you're actually, like, into the tournament, you don't even realize that there was a commercial. So it's kudos to NBC for for providing an actual – Right. Entertainment. Right. right? Um, but pretty unbelievable golf. Yeah. I mean, Scotty Shuffler and Wyndham Clark, two weeks in a row. <laughs> Tied, I mean, well, I, I first and second. First and second. And then yeah. uh, first time ever in players' history back to back, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think before we get to Scotty Scheffler, because not enough can be said about him, um, are we worried about Xander Shoffley? I mean, I think if you take him and Cam, well, Cam Young at least comes in second place. Well, Cam Young's only been on tour for three yeah. years. Xander. Uh, Cam Young is not part of the top dogs conversation. I mean, why would you be worried about Xander? He can't close. I mean, he played, you know, granted, I mean, he played pretty well at the Vaspar on Sunday. He, he Again, he, he that's what he's doing at flurry, backdoor but, top fives. But, you know, saying that's they cash checks. They cash big I, checks. I don't, trust me, backdoor top fives pays a lot of money. It does, but... <laughs> I mean, I just thought, you know, the two shots that they both hit on on six, 17 was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. You know, to, you know, I can't believe No one else did. Right. No one else sniffed. No. But Other than the first two groups that both guys birdied, Shane Lowry and somebody else, because Shane Lowry almost made a hole-in-one, they didn't have another birdie up until no. Wyndham Clark making birdie. But, Which for Wyndham Clark to go birdie on 16, birdie on 17, to have a chance to birdie to tie on 18. He had, he had a half birdie on 18. Yeah. That ball was <sighs> down. You know, but for Xander though, I mean, he left his eagle putt short. He he miss hit the uh, birdie putt on on seventeen. Both their drives you know? on fifteen and, were terrible. Mm-hmm. So swipey fades. But I just thought it was great because it was more than it was more than a two horse race. Yeah, I mean, Brian Harmon storylines. Yeah, Brian Harmon that that ball didn't have any curve on it. He was on a string all day. Um, stinks that he hit his worst tee ball of the day on sixteen. Well, if you notice, like even from well on eighteen, it was like from Thursday on, it just seemed like everybody was just blasting it into the into the pine straw. You know, it's like well, I'm not even bringing that water into play. I'd much rather try to battle from the pine straw than anywhere else. You know, on which hole? Eighteen. Uh, yeah, because it was just it was stupid. Except for Wyndham Clark hitting a what four iron. Yeah, we'll get to that. four iron. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> I, have a, I have it. I have a hear me out. Actually, you know, I'll just get out of it. You yeah. already said it now. Yeah. All, right. Love. all right, now hear me out. Um, I, I will take all the heat on this, especially from you, as we've gotten arguments. I'm all for rolling the ball back now. <coughs> I, <laughs> I want to roll the ball back, and I want, it to, I want to roll it back like 20%. It is. It should be illegal to go four iron wedge into 18 at TPC Sawgrass. It should be illegal for that. That is that I played that hole. It's the most outrageous thing I've ever seen. Now, obviously, Wyndham Clark, he can hit that rope hook iron that goes a mile. Mm-hmm. But that hole is not designed for an iron wedge. 
I mean, Tiger's two iron that everybody talks about. He went two. He went stinger two iron seven iron right into the hole, not wedge. So that bows the question: Has technology made hole eighteen? I mean, not one single player sniffed making a bogey, bogey coming down the stretch. When in the past of the players' championships, if you're coming down the stretch, you're going to see one or two guys. It's either birdie or bust, and they're bust. The ball's in the water. Right. They made stress-free pars. That's not how that hole is supposed to be designed. Now, what's changed with that hole? Because this week it was soft. Correct. So, uh, roll the ball back. Uh, they should cut, <laughs> cut the pine trees down, put rough over there, and now you're seeing bogeys and double bogeys. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm proud of you, you know, for, for admitting <sighs> on national air you know, worldwide, you know, there's the world. I gave you heat. The internet, I gave you the heat. internet lives forever. I, that said, I was correct. You know, we may, may have cursed at you a little bit with, with your thoughts on, on the a ball. Little bit. Uh, <laughs> a uh, little bit. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm team roll the ball back now. It's just uh four iron wedge is just not fair on that golf hole. Nope. Or like we keep saying, make a golf course hard again. I mean, why as amateurs or everyday golfers do we get to play? rough you know as far as like tighter fairways the rough's a little taller but every tour event they have to maintain longer a, certain, a longer fairway a shorter rough and a certain green so essentially for the pj tour what a lot of people don't know is yes they do go to different green complexes but there's a threshold on where the stimp has to be for that tournament they send out pre-inspections to like either dictate new tour events or to make sure that the course they're hosting the event still is in good shape when they do that, there's a certain threshold the, the putting surface has to be. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like what we were just talking about, the, the putting aspect, the skill aspect. Some of it, I think, is being a little misconstrued because if the tour is managing every green complex to essentially play the same speed, like obviously slope and undulation is completely different, but the physical speed, that's taking a little of the, the skill touch out of it if there's now a new threshold that they're maintaining every course. But when we go play River Landing on Sunday, Castle Bay on a Thursday, go to Myrtle Beach on a Friday, we're not playing on the same surface. No, nah, it was it's uh, not a thirteen stamp everywhere you go. When yeah. I when I got into the golf business, I started on the uh, grounds crew at Innisbrook, and I was on the Copperhead course. And when the PJ Tour came through there, we actually had to get the Viber Tamp in the bunkers. You know, we had to. I mean, the what the PJ Tour does for those events with the grounds crew. I mean, it, it starts eight months ahead of time. And you are dictated on what you can and can't do. But every single bunker has to be the same consistency. You want know, to talk about four guys trying to hold up a Viber Tamp up a slope of uh, a bunker on 18 in the fairway or nine in the fairway. I mean, it was, but it's just stuff you have to do. Yeah. You well, know? well and, what, a, what a contrast of two weeks, right? Cause, oh, yeah. Because well, what was the winning score at the Valspar this week? I think it's 12. Yeah. There was only one player or two players double digits under par. Yep. But, you know, at the same time, too, you think about the two go golf courses and, you know, TPC Sawgrass has, you know, all their areas around the green are basically short grass. Yeah. Where Valspar, it's you're on the green or you're in the rough. Yeah. You wanted the two. Or deep or, bunkers. Or short. Yeah. You know, there is no, there is no runoff out there. You know, yeah. everything there is, is you can't miss the greens and, uh, and get away with it like you can mm -hmm. anywhere at TPC Sawgrass. Mm -hmm. Now, the best player in the world, though, he's not missing greens. No. So when he shoots 64s and it looks pretty effortless. <laughs> I want somebody to start a golf school and try to teach that swing to people. I want to see people out on the driving range on a Sunday trying to emulate Scotty Scheffler's golf swing. And I think it would be the most hilarious thing you can, you've ever seen. I, I kid you not. I can't tell you how many lessons I've done where, uh, where people come in they're like, I just feel like I'm, I'm swaying. Um, it's my favorite word in golf instruction, sway. Um, and they're like, my footwork just feels like Scotty Scheffler and it feels terrible. And I'm like, mm. I'm like, did, did you hear what you just said? Cause it's the best golfer in the world playing this, I would say third best golf of all time statistically. Yep. Um, and you're saying his footwork is bad. I wonder if like, I wonder if Rory McIlroy goes like to the drive range at night and tries to do like a shoot McGavern, you know, <laughs> shoot, 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 <laughs> in the, uh, start walking <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, and someone, someone was talking about it saying that they're wondering if he's just had an injury in the past and it's just more or less like one of those things that 
you know, you, you're you're moving something, and it's just more or less be be right. safe. Well, that's, you know, a, that's the beauty of the game of golf right now. You know, there there isn't one swing. Yeah. You know that that's going to you know push the needle. You know, it's yeah. not like back in the in the eighties and nineties. You know, Jim yeah. McLean, uh, David Ledbetter, they were method teachers. Yeah. You know, and it didn't matter your body type. It didn't matter your skill set. I'm teaching you, you the you, same you, swing. You put the club no here. What. You put yep. it here. And, yep. and trust me, there's part of it. It's very easy for me as an instructor to kind of get into those those spells where I feel like I'm giving the same lesson to different people because there is very important positions. You have to put the club to be successful. Correct. Um, we talk about it with you with your backswing. When I help you with your backswing all the time. But I'm an athlete, uh, though. Yeah, I can do yeah, that, you know. Yeah. So. But it's more or less just like I I – what did Tiger always say? If he had what, if it, if he still has what, he will he can still play his best golf. I have no clue. I mean, he said all the time, "If I can still, if I still have my hands, and if my hands are still in my golf swing, I can play. I can compete anywhere." Scotty yeah. Scheffler, what is his club? What what does his golf swing come down to? Because there's no stick my body, be still position the club well, it's great hands it's moment of impact yeah, moment I mean, of ham- impact you're able to save it with your hands yep that's what the best golfers do and there's there that's a little bit of the athleticism to the golf swing that there's there's hands involved not everything is just perfect and hold it well you'll see it this week when they they all go to houston right or is it it's houston that they're at this week right they're in Texas. Texas. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> the schedule is switched. Somewhere in Texas. Yeah. Uh, but I think Scotty's playing, Wyndham's playing. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got a good field this weekend, so. Yeah. I and mean, it, I it, think it just, the last two weeks, because we had Malnati win this week. Malnati just changed swing instructors five weeks ago. And his swing instructor said this past week he had a bad final round at the players. Played a great Saturday, had a bad Sunday. We're like, don't change anything. Keep working at it. It'll work out. Boom. Yep. You know, wins this week. I thought it was great too reading uh, about him that you know just his his bag makeup. You know, he's got the I think it's the eight eighteen uh, hybrid still in his bag, and then he switched uh, his four and five iron are different than his six through wedge. He's got the T two hundred four, T one fifty five, and then and then T one hundred is all the way down because he wants that you know he that five iron he wants to produce a certain ball flight. You know, and so it's just great that you can actually change things you know with the equipment without changing anything else. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the one thing that we've seen a lot is that we call it comboing and a fitting Mm -hmm. is so far this year uh, with ping, Blueprint S, Blueprint T, Callaway, Apex, CB, MB, Mizuno, 243, 245. So a lot of people, they're kind of, well, it was great about the the C boom that happened two years ago in golf. The what? The, you can't say that word on YouTube, are they? The, The COVID golf. Oh, yeah. okay. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Is a lot of people are coming <laughs> out of that with no <laughs> bias. Can't say it on YouTube. It'll get monetized. But uh, demonetized. Demonetized, rather. Yeah. Um, is a lot we of people monetized. are coming into it more unbiased. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with being a brand loyalist. But my golden rule, and it makes most people laugh and fitting, is until they write you a paycheck, it doesn't matter. Right. There's some people that if they get a tightless driver, they got to have socks, underwears, suit and tie that say tightless too. And there's nothing wrong with being a brand loyalist. But what if in the iron category, we didn't at the Callaway and it's eight yards longer in carry. But because we wanted to stick with one brand through the bag and didn't test anything else, we gave up eight yards at the same club head speed. And so I think that's been the biggest switch this year in fittings that we've seen is a lot of players are willing to try everything. Mm-hmm. And they're coming into it unbiasedly. So it's been a lot of fun. And you're seeing it trinkle into the tour where Scotty Scheffler has tightless tricks on TaylorMade. Best mm-hmm. player in the world. Yep. Not 14 clubs and f- the ball. And not, not, and TaylorMade pays him a lot of money. To play the 10 clubs that he plays. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's the cool part. If you look at, like, a Xander, he's got Vokey wedges, Callaway irons, and then he's got a prototype three-wood. Same thing. It's th- these guys and girls on the LPGA – are now getting away from that traditional mindset of I gotta have everything match. And they're trying to f- find different windows. Like a four iron flight window is completely different than a pitching wedge. And for him, like for Malnati to come out and do this, it's pretty special. Right. Well, I think the the manufacturers are getting better at that combo sets too, because for the longest time they're they just were, moving they're, loft. That's right. All well the, doing. plus there was such a gap that you mm. really couldn't combo it yourself. No. no. You know, because just the way they set you know, predetermine their lofts. And there's some of that too, even now. Tyler, you know. this is definitely the easiest because Tyler said that 
you can you don't have to touch the lofts of any of their clubs. It's just the difference of heads from 100 to 150 to 200 to 350 is the ball flight gets higher right. as you go up in the sets. The launch gets a little easier. So that's more with CG. So and that and I I'd probably say in the bays I've been seeing a lot more people combo than traditional seven clubs the same. Yep. Now, what would you probably say the number one irons you've been fitting? Like, what have you noticed in the bays here recently? I would say my higher handicap players, it's been kind of a toss-up between the new G730 from Ping. Yeah, that's been it, two it's weeks like a now. Cheat code, yeah. 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 Um, and then the Mizuno Hot Metal. And then the better players were seeing a lot of that Titleist T150-100 combo. I mean, mm-hmm. just a lot of it, TaylorMade MC, uh, Blueprint S. So it's been kind of all over the board this year so far. It's been great. Yeah, I would say I've the, the one that's kind of – surprised me just because when someone puts hl on a club you would think like well let me rephrase this so a lot of higher handicaps have issues with their irons to where their launch is too high and their spin is too low um so their ball can fall out of the sky or they can get the long knuckle the knuckle ball so a lot of these newer clubs with their cg sometimes they don't like with these power irons like the regular AI smoke, the 790, or even the old stealth and QI10, like ball just comes out now lower. Now you have companies actually making a high launch, like Mizuno. They they launched their JPX high launch for mm-hmm. somebody that does need help getting some launch on it without the ball knuckling as much. So like the iron that surprised me, the, especially the past few weeks, as I fit I fit a good bit of people into that high launch AI smoke iron. Um which is 29 degrees of loft and they're still getting plenty of distance, plenty of the right amount of spin without doing it the old loft jacked way. Right. Um, now, obviously, I mean, what do we say last year? A hot metal was our number one iron. Yeah. It's that's probably still the case, Mizuno wise. It's just their line is pretty straight through. I would say player wise, um, it's either kind of between the one fifties. Probably the one fifty is is the most popular iron. That we've been seeing in the bays here recently. Yeah, most consistent for sure. Well, what's fascinating too is seeing all the different shaft combinations that, that are mixing in with these. You know, it's not mm-hmm. it's not the Project X six and everything is you know everything goes with it. It's, Those have their you places, know, right? They yeah. do, but it's like the axioms, it's the the um, the recoils, it's the acras. I mean, it's just you know, right now it's like you know, there's a buffet out there for every golfer. You know, you just have to go through the line and pick out mm-hmm. what you want. You know, to to fit your game. Yeah, I mean the blueprints, the new blueprints are a lot of players have that have I've seen more players actually go into pings that haven't ever played pings because of these newer blueprint irons. Cuz ping a lot of the times you see a player if they're coming in and they have like the S I or the I59s. Yeah. Um they're like you you know what they're looking for. Pings have always kind of had that niche cult following. So, I've actually had quite a few players go into the blueprints. I've never played a ping iron before. Well, a lot of people they don't realize it's a ping iron because it doesn't look like one. No, no not at all. Mean, it's yeah, they really they need good. to bring the zing back. That's what they need to do. <laughs> bring the zing iron back. We see enough of those still in the fitting bays <laughs> that that I don't think we need to do that. Now, I think there's one company that needs to step it up iron wise that that has been kind of dull in our base. Strixon. Strixon. Yeah. The 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 Mark IIs compared to the first version of the ZXs for whatever reason just hasn't held its tenure. Well, they made them in black. Oh, that's a yeah. good point. They, they're trying. When do you, I mean, I could probably see a new iron on the horizon for them. Yeah, I mean, it's time. It's two, they're a two-year life cycle, so mm-hmm. it's hard to believe we're on that second-year life cycle uh, well, it's already. Just, you know, it feels like yesterday, Ping came out with the 425s. <laughs> yeah, and it's been five years. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, some things, you know, I guess it's Strix on in Cleveland. Cleveland, on, they redid their whole launcher line this year. So yeah, next which year is the, the Strix on. Said so it's, it's if you go, want a forgiving driver. Yeah, so I think it, from a company standpoint, it's like, okay, you know, let's shift their focus to this segment of the golf business. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is not always about the the single digit, you know, um, ball strikers. You know, they're trying to develop what they've, what they've seen from the last couple of years of players coming into the game and pushing their sales that way, you know, through game improvement, um, mm-hmm. easier to hit uh, type of, you know, type of irons. I mean, that is 99% of the golf market. 99.5 probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what – so a company can't do it all at one time. You know, it's no different than Mizuno. Mizuno doesn't come out with a, 
the hot metal line and the, the pro series, the pro they always series, alternate years, alternate, yeah. alternate back and forth. So, you know, and, and sometimes though you do have to decide what kind of company are you, you know, are you a, are you a titleist only to where, you know, the, was it the T 300? Is there, is there 350 is their game improvement, iron, but that's as far as they go. And yeah. then they work their way down. I mean, I wouldn't so, be surprised if Titleist does come out with a, like a 450 because remember they had the 400 yeah, they had that, that hybrid out. iron yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, but that's also part of it too, right? What was mm-hmm. Cleveland Lunch always known for? The hybrid irons. Yep. yep. Um, now you have other companies that have kind of done it. You know, Cobra that does the T rails. You have Core Edge with Hot Launch. Hot Launch. It's, it makes it to where, there's plenty of options, but they're still kind of like it's it's easy for us fitting wise because there's still distinct difference of yeah. groups within the irons. Cleveland had a great players iron back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. You know, when they had the the, the uh, launcher action. driver. Yeah, the tour action was a great line. Um, you know, from from Cleveland. But I think Cleveland is known for this. Srixon is known for that, and they're all under the same umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse so me. but I, I I was just thinking that the the Z X series might be time for a little bit of a revamp. Could be. Catch up with the big dogs. Uh, they will, though. I it, mean, it'll cycle through. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, with Peter Malnali winning this week, what else did he do this week or at the start of the Oh, week? we didn't even talk about that. Yeah. I completely so, forgot about that. So kind of interesting, the guy that was involved in what we're getting ready to talk about also won. So kind of coincidence there, maybe. Well, I'm just glad he won because yeah. it opens up a sponsor's exemption for somebody else that's not on the board. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they have another board member that doesn't get in, then... Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty, I think it's, I think it's cool. Obviously his game has trended. Like even though he's gotten sponsored exemptions into these elevated events. He's performed. He has performed. Yes. Right. So he's made the most of them. It's, it's not yellow. like he's Adam Scott where he's missing the cut. It's a yellow ball. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I still, like I showed you the, the, the meme yesterday <laughs> of, of, uh, <laughs> Peter Malnati going back to uh, the uh, uh, Piff and being like, my my offer yesterday is different today. Yeah, <laughs> that days in the past. What's my new offer? Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of that meeting? Yeah, so Tiger and uh, all player Coach, advisory board. So how Spieth, do you say his name? Adam Scott, Yasser. Yeah, yeah, whatever his name is. They they all had a uh, a golf day in the Bahamas. I thought it was just Tiger and him that played. No. And I thought everybody else joined. No, they, Webb Simpson, all of them went out there with him. Well, it was nice to see that they're, you know, they're, they're climate uh, friendly people too with all the yachts and planes that arrived. But yeah. But I digress. But no, I thought, I thought it was, it was interesting that, you know, that they hosted him. You know, it wasn't, it was almost like I didn't, I didn't feel like it was, you know, Yasser begging to move forward with him. I think it's the tour. They've got their plan now, and it's like, well, here, let's let's well, bring him in versus, hey, come to Saudi Arabia. I want to talk well, to you Well, Jordan B said it. This this should have happened two years ago. Instead of closing it off two years ago, mm-hmm. where Jay Monahan said he wouldn't give the guy a time of day, and then randomly pops out of nowhere without telling anybody that there was a merger, to now we're hosting him, you know, trying to keep him in good graces in the circle because— it's. I hope everybody understands that the PJ Tour is now 100% a business. And I wouldn't be surprised if at any point it goes public, you know, uh, for investing in, in mm-hmm. you know, a year or two down the road. But the PJ Tour enterprises right now is basically going to, I want to say, it's not going to ruin the game of golf. It ruins the game of golf that we've all grown up with and known as far as the it's PJ done. Tour goes. It's done. Right. It's a business, and these are businessmen who are now in control of a supposed gentleman's game that mm-hmm. it's it's going to change. And, I, you know, it's almost to the point where the Players Advisory Council, I believe, is going to be it's going to be weeded out from these meetings with, real with, soon. With, with yeah. like— It's going to be businessmen. It's going to be—yeah, it's going to be suits. Yep. Which, technically, there's two suits making the calls right now, Jimmy Dunn and Jay Monahan, mm-hmm. right? Um I just think that there there has to be well the strategic sports group the the current ownership or half of the ownership right now right they essentially invested their 3 billion dollars and they're giving 750 million of that equity value to to top 30 guys is there 30 golfers on the PGA tour right now that are worth that money no 
There's not. And at the same time, though, they, they And I don't think it's fair to ask that question. Like, I'm not saying it as in, like, as a knock on anybody. I'm just saying as an entertainment value, as a— I mean, Jordan, Jordan Spieth has missed the last two cuts. Mm-hmm. So when is Jordan Spieth going to pull the Rory McIlroy where he's like, hey, man, uh, being a part of all this stuff is affecting my game. I got to dial it back to, to remember I'm a golfer. Right. right. I think a lot of times, and even in other professional sports, you know, you, you tend to forget the people that built it and the reason why you wanted to become a pro golfer. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanted to become up here. It wasn't because, you know— I, you know, it's for a self-serving, right? It was because, you know, you, you fell in love with the game at some point by watching the PJ tour, you mm-hmm. know, you, the, watching the majors, you know? So uh, you have to almost kind of throw it back a little bit and say, okay, well, how did we get here? You know? And if anything, you just give Tiger the $750 million because he's the only one that ever, I mean, truly know, moved he's, the needle in the last 30 he years. He is the needle. Mm-hmm. He is the needle. Yep. I mean, it goes without saying. I mean, obviously, the number one player in the world right now really couldn't care less, right? Like, he hasn't been too vocal about what's going on. No. He's essentially said, I'm playing in these tournaments. I'm here. If you're not here, you chose not to be here. So, I think I think you're going to see a, a huge disruption in the game. I think it's going to change uh, dramatically over the next – in the within two years. And the reason why I say that is because, again, these guys that put the money in – they, they didn't do it because they they love Roy McIlroy. And they, they love the love, history of golf. Right. No, they're businessmen. They're making, they, get, they have in to it. make money. I want my money back. Now, who doesn't have to make money? Uh, Piff. Uh, well, I mean, well, let's just say, like, the, the, the scale is a little different, yeah. but. Piff makes money when they sleep. True. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's something that will always be there. But they, again, the minute you start going down this road, I, I think it's going to be a. Uh, there, there's a lot of. I'm just. There's I'm, a lot of things to be determined. I'm just kind of laughing at the whole situation on how like it's like well yeah it makes sense it's good that they're finally meeting them it's like well two years ago you you the media and the PGA Tour made a staunch stance comparing PIF to a terrorist organization did, so did we just forget about that did but I'm gonna throw something out to you not to get too political here but. What did you see Sunday watching the Valspar on 18? What did you see there? You saw a ton of empty skybox seats. You saw a ton of people not going to this. You know, so what they're doing now with the, the uh, PJ Tour Enterprises is they're putting the onus on charities gone, all right? PJ Tour is not involved in charity anymore. They're leaving that up to the sponsors and the events. So if they want to invest in charity, PJ Tour charities, they don't exist anymore. Okay, that's up to the sponsor. And the sponsor can only donate charity money based on what? Ticket sales, concessions. Mm-hmm. If there's people not going there, then why am I, why is Valspar sponsoring that? You know, so. Well, how many, we've already seen how many sponsors pull out now. You have. I mean, you Char- big I mean Charles Swap. Swar- yeah, yeah, Charles Swap and Wells Fargo. And Wells Fargo. Farmers, Farmers Insurance, they're gone from San Diego. It's funny. It's like actual, like, financial institutions are pulling out first, right. which is, which should be like a, a red flag amongst yep. itself. So I, I think again, you know, I mean, a world tour is coming there. Right. But there's, there's only one thing that's going to calm us for the next four weeks. And that's the masters is in three weeks. Oh, so actually less than three weeks. So, um, you know, that's, that's going to be, I can't wait for that to everybody's together. And it's going to be really this year, I think being us I think versus the, I them think, with I, live. You think it's going to be? I thought, I, I feel like the us versus them is done. I don't think it is. I what think do you it think? Is, I think it's there. I think I'm glad I'm here, not hearing it talked about anymore. The us versus them. Yeah, I mean that's what's been nice the last few weeks. But deep down aside, here's, here's, you here, want them here, on live to run the table. Here's my thing. Yeah. I will say this. That'd deep be cool. deep yep. down, I do think Rom, Cam Smith, uh, Brooks Kepka. And Bryson DeChambeau are a lot stronger four than four of the PGA Tour guys. Scotty Scheffler is in a in a group of his own. Who's following up Scotty Scheffler as the other three compared to those top four on the PGA Tour? Rory, Wyndham, Rory. What has he done? Keith oh. Mitchell on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. What a finish! By the way. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, birdie, birdie, eagle. Did you ever do that when you played there? Birdie, birdie, eagle. No. Uh, no unofficial. No unofficial. unofficial records at, no. at, at the Copperhead. No. But I'm just saying, like, so, like, part of me, deep down, I don't think there is an us versus them because I don't think the top four and the top four are comparable. I think the top four on Live are a lot better but, than 
I would just I should say three. I but mean, the, Scotty's the, better than everybody. The chip but. on the shoulder for the official world rankings oh, yeah. has got to still be there, and these guys are going to come into this event and prove that hey, I'm still one of the best fifty in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm still one of the best twenty in the world. You know, so I just I mean, I, Bryson I DeChambeau is not the a, animosity may not be there no, towards no, the players. The animosity's gone, but I think the live guys versus mm. the uh, world tour or uh, the official world rankings. It would not <laughs> shock me if on Sunday we saw Bryson Brooks and DJ Cam. It's all depending on ball striking because obviously he's statistically the best putter. But DJ is doing something for the first time in his career, and I thought it was hilarious that they aired it. He's practicing and gearing up for the Masters. He's actually putting an effort to practice. I wonder if those guys are going to show up in shorts, though. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Master odds. Master odds are out as of as of a uh, couple hours ago. Scotty Scheffler plus four fifty. <laughs> so if you bet on him, you're going to lose money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bet a million. To Rory, win a million point one. Rory is the second favorite, which would just be dumb. Just bet on no him. chance. Uh, Ten to one, and then Rom twelve to one. And then the next, and then they have Kepka twenty to one. I'm I'm gonna throw I'm gonna dabble a little there. I think I, you'd be I, crazy I, I, sorry, not to put a little a twenty to one I, I on Kepka. I think Deshambo is a sleeper. And no. now these, they're playing in Miami this week, right? Yeah, uh, or yes. next week. Is uh, it this week? I think it's Live? this week. Yeah, I, I I haven't paid attention. Yeah, I think they've got two events. Because Harold had a CGA event this past weekend, so yeah. I would say probably either this week or next week. Yeah, but I mean they got Wyndham twenty eight to one. So Wyndham's game, I mean, he's a good enough iron player that I think if and if the putting holds strong, he's a he's a that's that's you can dabble some money there. Yeah. But on various <laughs> sports betting apps in North Carolina now. Oh my gosh. So tired of hearing. North Carolina. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Appreciate it. I just it. like the commercial where they show the one girl that's saying North Carolina, but like she's facing a different direction. Yeah. I'm just like is she what, 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 talking to me or what's talking going to somebody on? else? Where's, where, is there a TV over there? Um, and then Gronkowski yelling at me. Yep. <laughs> but that's, that's I don't know. Good. It's just nothing but good stuff, I guess. I think uh, the po- golf has shown some some good things the last yeah, two Yeah, I mean, weeks. the last two weeks have been the most refreshing two weeks of golf we've had in a long time. It'll be now for us, since we're an equipment company, uh, It's this is the – Silly season for where players are trying different things in their bags. Oh yeah, for one reason only. Um, so we're gonna be we're gonna be paying attention there, see if we see anything, any trends mm-hmm. leading yeah. into yeah to a Masters. So and just a quick plug, but you know the, also the Masters means our Monday after the Masters, yep. our third annual. So looking forward to that on the fifteenth. Yep. Well, perfect. Well, obviously we're in March, so March Madness is in. Full, full spring, we're down to what, Sweet 16? Roll Sweet tide. 16, Roll Tide. Yeah, that's tide. right. Um, we actually have a really cool March Madness of our own on our YouTube channel here. We've got our driver... Uh, driver uh, Challenge. Driver yeah. Challenge. Driver uh, Battle. Yep. So we're, we've got a bracket, and every Monday and Friday... Yep. yep. Every Monday and Friday, we're going to be uploading a new video with this challenge. It's Caleb versus Nikki. Um, and I'm, I've already watched the first two episodes myself, and it's pretty surprising to see some of the ball speeds out of certain heads that were not exactly uh, positively received at first. So it was kind of cool to see a little bit of a, a swing on that. So yeah. be sure you guys tune in for that. Yeah, and to be fair, this isn't a this this isn't a driver test driver test to see which driver's better. It's Caleb and I hit our drivers com- two completely different ways, but we have around the same club head speed, same ball speed. So we're really trying to figure out Okay, if we put these drivers in pods with two different swings, what kind of results are we going to get? Now, it, it kind of co- becomes a competition at the end. Yeah. Right now, it's not a competition. It's a you know individual for three different drivers. Which one's going to be the best? So, um, we may have had a few comments about you know the best testing. It's like, well, we're not testing. It's a battle. Okay, there's a difference. Who's uh, I'd be interesting to see who who plays Cinderella? Yeah, I you mean, know. there's always one, right? Yeah, always one. Now, that being said, there's not any more Cinderella's in the real March Madness right now. Cream no. rise, rise to the top. Rose to the top. It's getting there. Yeah. But uh, I, I forgot about them. Roll Tide. <laughs> I don't give a piss about nothing but Tide. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we will catch you guys next week. Be sure to turn on those push bell notifications so you don't miss those March Madness videos. Peace.